So we're getting pretty deep into this uh, map assignment number one, and we've uh, got our two subs in, and they're making, they're summing and basically being omnidirectional. We need to make them cardioid. So we got to tweak the processing, and this ties directly with the lectures we've looked at for phase in class. Um, we need to basically reverse polarity and delay the rear sub. So how do we do that? Well, we're going to do with work with the processor and map is cool because you, you not only do you have geometries, you know, stages and stuff, you also have speakers and signal processors and microphones. And we're not going to be dealing with the mics on this assignment. We are going to be dealing with the signal processor by default, only a single D uh, processors in here. You could add another processor if you wanted, and you are going to do that later in the semester, but not right now to see that processor. Let's go to processor settings. It has its own unique tab. And earlier we assigned the front speaker by default to output one and the rear speaker to output two. Let's name that sub front and sub rear. And you need to do that for your assignment and confirm that that actually happened. And just to kind of show you what, what's going on here, if we go back to object settings and we select the front sub, you'll see it is indeed going to front sub front and rear sub is going to sub rear. So we got our processor set up. Now at this point, we're just going to mimic exactly what we talked about in the lecture, where um, the rear sub is three and a half feet behind it, which we already did. It's delayed by three and a half milliseconds and it's reversed in polarity. So let's do that, it's pretty simple. This is a pretty cool little loudspeaker um, process simulation. Let's reverse the rear subs and let's delay it by 3.1 milliseconds. And now, Let's go back to model view and uh, deselect. So we're not going to just see the effects of one sub and hit predict and sit back, make some coffee and boom, it looks very cardioid like. Let's go look, look at the top down view. It's kind of cardioid. In fact, it's got a little lobe here because it's a little bit more like it's super cardioid. And that's the last step in making gradient subarrays is you got to reduce the level by 3 dB. Otherwise, it's going to be a little hypercardioid in the back. So the rear sub needs to be attenuated slightly. So let's uh, let's do that. Let's um, uh, go back to object settings and let's select our rear sub. Oh, we don't do it here. We do it in processor settings and just attenuate it by minus 3 dB. And with that done, let's go back to model view kick well let's go to i uh let's keep it in this view and hit predict and sit back and check our email and boom that obviously i've only selected one sub because it's kind of omni so let's deselect over here that's a key thing you either select all or don't select anything if you want everything to be show up in the prediction and at this point i'm going to check my text messages and boom that looks much more cardioid. Very happy about that. Let's look at it in 3D. That's cool. And uh, let me see if there's anything else I got to do here. Are we on the same video? We, we basically got through. Uh, oh, well, that it, the, the instructions are pointing me in a new direction here, which is important. Look here. If we go into multiple view here, you'll see that in, in top view, you can see the cardioid quite well. And in isometric 3D, you can. But in side view and front view, it does not appear 3D at all. And that's because it's really just a 2D image um, painted on a 3D surface. So to really make it 3D, we're going to need another vertical uh, prediction plane. So this is a this this is a kind of a big process, but we've already done it with the stage. We're essentially going to build another stage and imagine that it's not really a stage. So let's clear this and uh, follow the instructions here. You're going to add a, a rectangle over here with primitives and I'm going to click in here and stick it in. So there's my rectangle and we want to put in these exact measurements here. And so it's going to be and watch what happens. I'm going to make this thing I'm going to put this at minus 25 and I want to be centered on the Y axis. And here's the cool part. I want to rotate it uh, around the X axis by 90 degrees. And my depth and my width need to be 50 and 50 to kind of mimic the stage we already have. Cool. And lastly, we want to make it a prediction plane so it turns blue. Now, deselect everything, predict, you will get a 3D image. Oh, what am I doing right now? I don't know. I'm scrubbing my Hot Wheels. There we go. That, that's just random, totally random. At this point, let's use the, or, the orbit tool here. 
and kind of look at it and you can see we actually have a 3D pattern and that's pretty slick. Now it's a little weird to have it below the stage there. So let's clear and let's take care of that. And this reinforces uh, some steps we were doing earlier when we were messing with the vertex. But essentially, we want to move the vertex to the bottom corner. So this is a review. Let's go to the Select tool. Select just that plane. Right click. Select Vertex. Now click where you want it. It is in dead center right now. That's where we actually want it. And here's the silly part. Select Object via right click. And Return finishes the job. Now, select it again, and you'll see its position is kind of in a weird place. It's at the Z minus 20. It's at zero, zero, minus 25. Let's just correct that, put that at zero feet. Oh, it's having a problem with that. Let's see what happens. Oh, I think I had a problem with it because it was too tall. So did I, uh, let's just resize the width of it to 25 feet. It doesn't need to be 50 feet tall. And it's still having an issue with, but it does or it's not. And I'm going to reset this view here back to isometric so it looks exactly how it was when I started. Oop, I'm going to have to grab my uh, pan tool. So anyway, it's not underground anymore, which is kind of cool. See, no undergroundy. And if I deselect or select all, predict, basically get what I want, which is hopefully, knock on wood, um, a cardoid sub. Yeah, that's pretty cool. So anything else on this assignment? I think that's it. Um, you do need to basically submit the map file um, and all that, name it correctly, and you're good to go. That's it. And I will hit predict at 80 hertz, and it better be super. It better be card. Make sure to read the rubric that's attached to this. I didn't put that in this this little document here, but there is a rubric attached that basically identifies what I'm going to grade you on. Cool. Excellent. Have a good day.